the transition pictures for David Koch, one of the infamous Koch brothers. He died in 2019 at the age of 79 of pancreatic cancer. He was by trade, I think, a chemical engineer and had his own engineering company, which in the 80s merged with Coke Industries. And he and his brother Charles, amid much family infighting, I think, took the whole thing over. And it had a kind of Monsanto-y, wicked -y feel to it, like they were the enemies of society. In fact, David Koch was a huge benefactor for the arts and also socially liberal. He supported women's rights and gay marriage and the legalization of marijuana. And yet at the same time, because he was a libertarian, he opposed uh, affordable health care. He opposed uh, Social Security and the minimum wage. It was a strange contrast. He retired in 2018, mainly because he was ill. He'd had pancreatic cancer for several years. And in 2019, it finally took his life. Many people said, will you do David Koch's transition pictures? I think there is a hope and expectation that these people who are perceived as having done wrong by society will get some kind of comeuppance in the afterlife. And that's generally not how it works. Remember Oppenheimer last time? He invented the atom bomb and uh, it didn't look like he got any kind of uh, punishment for it because that's not how grace and the universe work. But uh, anyway, I went into the energy of David Koch. And when I did, there he is. He was on the top of a hill and there was a zip line. Do you know what a zip line is? It's like a washing line, actually. But you somehow hook yourself onto it and slide down. And apparently it's very exhilarating if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, well, he did that only he had a T-shirt, I think, or a piece of material or a towel that he slung over the wire, hoping to go down it at quite a pace. But instead, he inched along. I am guessing that his final few months maybe even years, were quite painful. And he wasn't sure how long he was going to last, but he didn't want to live in this state of pain. But he went down the zip line, inch by inch by inch by inch, and it brought him to a path and the entrance to a tunnel. Now, usually the tunnel means the crossover point between the mortal and the immortal, the form and the formless. In his case, there was a second tunnel, which I've not seen before. It was down the path at the bottom, suggesting that he could go here and be done with it, or he could go down there and be done with it. Was it a medication thing? Was it a willpower thing? I don't know. But in the pictures, he took the first one. He just went. But as he walked through the tunnel, he looked kind of suave and laid back as if he was relieved it was all over. It felt good to be out of discomfort or pain or whatever. He ultimately arrived in that symbolic cave I always see. It doesn't exist. It's for me to be able to understand what the person's consciousness is going through. And in his case, although it was silent in the cave, there was a tornado blowing. It was massive and it was swirling and there was dust and debris, all these objects flying around in it silently. I had no real idea what that represented. I suppose it could be guilt. It could be realizations about what he'd done in life and mistakes he'd made. That's possible. Alternatively, it could be that a guy of that stature, of that influence with all those fingers in so many pies, could have had a lot of unfinished business and a lot of turmoil, a lot of things going on at the same time. And that's what remained in his consciousness as he was crossing over. But he didn't care. Either way, he didn't care. He sidestepped it gingerly and went up the tunnel. Only the tunnel was different this time to other people's. 
It had that feel of a derelict building that is halfway to being demolished. The floor had beams or girders at intervals and he had to leap from one to the other. It wasn't a straightforward passage. It's like, okay, I'll give this up if you'll let me go to that one. Okay, I'll release this expectation if you let me go to that one. The whole bunch of promises or pledges or oaths he had to take along the way in order to get to the light at the end. It was arduous. It was hard work, this. And it felt like a cleansing in some kind of way. But here's the interesting part. When he reached the top, It wasn't a dome like I normally see of light. It wasn't a dome. It was a passageway into what could have been a dome. I don't know, but it was like a passageway with steps up it. And all he did once he got to the top was walk up the steps into the light. It was very easy once he'd let go of everything he was being asked to release. You have a soul contract when you are born. That, many, many soul contracts actually, probably, with different people and different situations or whatever. But you are here to fulfill that contract. And some people are here to do certain things that you may go, wow, that's iniquitous, that's wicked, they shouldn't be doing that. But that's what they're here for. It's hard for me to understand that somebody would come and their sole contract would be to pollute a river or to destroy the government or deprive people of health care or whatever. That's hard for me to correlate in my own head. But it did seem that whatever David Koch's remit had been in life, according to his sole contract, he had fulfilled. And once he was able to release his ego stuff, and climb beyond that, he was welcomed by grace for a job well done, it struck me. The impediment was his own mortal um, belief system, his own attachments, his own preoccupations. But once those are gone, it felt like David Coke got a big thumbs up from the universe. Like, well done, you did it. And I don't think it's for us as these puny, insignificant characters in the history of the universe to judge him uh, for his soul's plan. We can't possibly understand the bigger picture. And somewhere in that, David Koch had a role that he fulfilled and completed. And uh, the universe said, well done.